Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Construction Project Management Principles. I'm a professor of construction management and this channel, if you're new to it, is all about construction. Basically, how to better manage our construction projects as well as I have a bunch of other areas that I dabble into with construction, including Microsoft Project. You can check my playlists and uh, please click subscribe and help build uh, the community together. Today, I want to be looking at quality and what exactly is quality in construction and looking at construction from traditional sort of viewpoints, from lean viewpoints, and really sort of getting at the root, what, what are we looking at when we talk about quality? And I thought a good place to begin would be a recent car purchase that I made, me and my wife. And so basically we have uh, decided to purchase a Lexus. And so what led us to that decision? There's a lot of manufacturers out there and amongst those manufacturers, why? choose Lexus. Well, for my wife, a big part of it was she liked the look of it. Uh, we both liked uh, the price comparison because we, we've driven a lot of cars over uh, our marriage and our lifetimes. And, uh, you know, I started out with a Firebird that I purchased, uh, which construction helped me in my very early, early years. And uh, that was a very nice car out of high school. Uh, then we kind of bought a GM uh, Monte Carlo used and so we used to run our cars like pretty much into the ground like uh, that Monte Carlo lasted us oh I'm gonna say a good 17 18 years it we had it painted twice we had it reupholstered once we really um, did well with that particular car and then we had other cars like we had a Ford Taurus and that was probably the worst car we ever had transmissions engines all all of these kind of quality issues. Uh, kind of had a few Japanese cars. Uh, we had a Honda Accord and a Honda Civic and a Nissan Pathfinder kind of at the same time when my girls were at home and uh, that sort of thing and very few problems like hardly any sort of quality issues. Uh, last uh, number of years we've had uh, several Mercedes Benz and very few quality problems uh, with them as well. Uh, but what, you know, what to choose and why to choose them. And of course, whatever was doesn't mean that is, it is what is, right? So you could have a manufacturer that was really good on quality for a number of years, and then they could kind of, they could kind of, the culture could change, a new CEO could come in that's more looking at the bottom line, thinking about a more short-term profitability, that sort of thing, it has, has its effects. Well, one of the deciding things for us, or at least for, for me on this particular one, uh, was the JD Power that they had posted. Now, of course, if I'm a Lexus dealer and a Toyota dealer, the, where we bought it, they're kind of together. Uh, we looked at uh, both, they were side by side. And we'd actually looked at the Mercedes and we pretty much went to purchase it till we checked this. And there was quite a, uh, like I said, a price difference. So we were looking at, so what's exactly different? But I found it very intriguing. I wasn't surprised at all to see Lexus and Toyota up there. Uh, lean construction methodologies, which is something that I really embrace and teach, uh, and especially have embraced over the last 10, 12 years. Um, you know, it's founded or based on the Toyota production system. And that really sort of start off the lean manufacturing um, aspect, going back to post-war Japan, uh, work of Deming Duran, Taiichi Ono, um, Toyota production system really developed over a number of decades. I mean, like when I when I was in high school, if you bought a Japanese car, it was kind of like, yeah, you got a probably a good buy. It was probably cheap, but it's a piece of junk. But every year it got better. Every year, continuously improving, and it really kind of floored the North American manufacturers in the '80s, and they had to really play catch up to try to see, well, what's going on? Like, you know, what's what's some of the issues? And uh, really, a lot of that was adopted into the lean construction methodologies. Not all of it, and the construction's quite different. And, you know, I spell that out in a number of my videos. So I'm not trying to say construction is manufacturing, although there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot we can learn there. 
Uh, but I do mean that uh, there's a lot of good base points that doesn't change, whether you're manufacturing or construction, um, from certain perspectives. I was also kind of surprised to see Mercedes had dropped significantly because I remember the previous Mercedes that we had purchased, um, they were, I think, third or fourth up here, right? Lexus and Toyota, they've pretty much been one and two for a long period of time. Uh, so that kind of um, caught my eye. So I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't surprised at that. But I do think it is something that should be considered when you're purchasing a car. And, you know, when I was doing work with a Canadian home builder called Madame Homes, uh, probably, oh, I'm going to say it's a good 15, 20 years ago now. Uh, one of the things I remember was on the JD, they, at, at the time, JD Power was actually rating home builders, just like they rate car manufacturers in major urban um, areas, like major urban areas in North America. And so I remember uh, Madame Homes, who would be Canada's biggest uh, home uh, builder then and now, uh, maybe not then, maybe close to it, but now for sure, uh, they were like second. And I remember they didn't want to be second, they wanted to be first. And so there was a lot that went into moving them from second to first. And there was a lot that I was um, privy to at that time, which was really good um, at some of the, the techniques. And big part of it is you have to change the culture and the philosophy. And it has to be something that's very stable. It's not something on a whim that you say, well, we're gonna do this. And as of January 1st, we are now you know, lean. We are going to now win the JD Power uh, Award. Um, it has to be something that's much more rooted and it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort so that people really sort of, when you work for that particular company, quality really does come first in your decision making. And if it's coming last, then that's a, a problem. Uh, and a lot of companies, they'll market it, um, not to pick on anybody, but at one time there was this quality is job one. And I don't think I had one of those cars at that time, and it certainly wasn't job one to me. Uh, so, you know, buyers on a long term basis, they remember, you know, did I have a brand and did that brand serve me well? And so, if, you know, if I'm a car manufacturer, I should be looking at can I get clients that want to repeat that will tell their friends that their next car, they're interested in that brand. And at the very least, that they're not going to say, I'll never buy that brand again because of quality. Well, construction in a lot of ways is very similar. And I've talked about this before. There's the short game and the long game. The short game is to get in and to get out and to make profit. The long game is to satisfy your client's needs, to know what they value and to provide that value for them, both in the short and the long term. And if you win clients over that perspective, you win them over a lifetime. And that is really like we're talking the difference between this much and this much in revenues and profits and so on. It's very difficult in construction, as I'm sure it's very difficult in the car sector to win over new clients all the time. It's much easier to retain the clients that you have. And so that's important. And so I'm looking forward to this. One of the, the other reasons I, I was very uh, you know, motivated for this is because I teach so much in lean construction, I wanna be able to connect better with uh, Lexus Toyota. And they actually have tours of their plants once you're an owner that you can go on tours and it's kind of cool. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that and I'll have more videos on that as, as things develop um, from that perspective. I was also very impressed with the whole sales team there um, it very often when I bought a new car, it's one person, salesperson, and they'll say, well, I got to talk to the manager or whatever. This was kind of different. Like the manager saw we were waiting for a few minutes, right away the manager came and was making sure that they got the sales rep for us, right? And then the manager later on would check in on us. The manager a couple of days later would even phone back. Never mind the salesperson, but in a very not pushy way, but friendly way and anything that I can help you with. And it was also, you know, the, the different people that were involved from the person that will demonstrate the car to you, who's very um, refined and knows all the details about how the car works. Today, it's a little bit different than before. You know, you turn the ignition and you go. 
Um, especially when you've got a lot of features as uh, some of the newer cars do, it takes a little bit of time and they have their own YouTube videos and all of that stuff to follow as, as well, which is interesting in the process. So it's really, I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say, it's really sort of from uh, cradle to grave kind of type service um, that they're trying to institute. Like I could, I could ream off, you know, there was Nick, the salesperson, there was Anthony, the manager, there was uh, Samantha who was, who took care of sort of the whole uh, process. There was uh, Stephanie who made sure about the payments and how that would work. Uh, and then there was Josie who took you through the car. Like there was a number of people that were involved in this process. So that was intriguing to me. That was the first time I've seen that. Whereas if it's just one person, it's good. One person can be good if they're really good, but if they're not so good, it's not so good. <laughs> so, uh, and if there was a problem, you could, you had a lot of reference points that you could talk to. So yeah, that was important when we talk about quality. And so I did do a little bit of background checking on, well, who today does lean manufacturing? So I used a little bit of chat GPT to do a little bit of research for me on this. And you know, Toyota, Japanese manufacturers in general, that's why they've had a pretty good quality record. So they hit a certain point where they weren't the cheapest cars. In fact, they were more expensive in a lot of ways. Uh, uh, than the North American manufacturers, you know, because their quality got, they really built a brand around quality. Uh, Ford Motor Company, although, you know, again, you can look back and you can sort of see uh, some of the aspects of where some of them aligned. So the other thing, point I'm going to make is just because you say you're lean manufacturing doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you're the best at it, right? Like it, it, there's a lot of companies that want to say things in construction, you know, there's terms that are being bantied around on LinkedIn and different things like fake lean construction companies. They just want to say they're lean, but they're not really. And there's some truth in that, right? So some of it's marketing, right? So that's, you gotta, you know, you really want to look at, well, what does some of the data show? Uh, data by a third party um, is helpful uh, in construction, like in new housing. Uh, we have Avid ratings now. I don't think JD Power does it anymore in uh, housing, but there's different ratings agencies that survey owners on a third party basis. And you can get good data that way to see how different companies rate uh, in different areas. But it, it, I think anytime that you have that, it, it can be at least a third party view of things. It can be interesting. And I always find it interesting to look at these lists too. I take it, you know, there's a lot of data that goes behind it and you can look it up. Uh, probably chat GPT is probably the easiest one to sort of quickly look this stuff up on. Um, but uh, you can see sometimes they're like, I, it's great. I like that the, the GM, like the Buick and the Chevy are, are right up there. Wow, that's, that's really good. And you know, head of uh, a number of luxury vehicles, right? Uh, and, um, but then I wonder, well, that's interesting that they're up there and Cadillac's down here. So I find, you know, I, I, I question those kind of things. I look at those things and I, I um, ask a number of questions when I see it. So and I think you should always do that, but it's, it's interesting. Um, it could be different plants that are making it. Uh, it could, and again, who's running the plants and those kind of things, uh, that differentiate, uh, between, uh, basically, uh, how they're scoring. Okay. So number of cars um, when we talk about construction and quality traditional construction we think of refers to the degree to which a project meets or exceeds the standards and requirements set forth in the contract specifications and regulatory guidelines well regulatory guidelines well you have to satisfy building codes you have to satisfy all the regulatory requirements um, that uh, authorities having jurisdiction have over the particular project or yeah you're not going to end up getting paid uh, and specifications you know and the specifications will detail out uh, that's why we have master format specifications that will detail out exactly what you're supposed to and required to do and what those standards are um, that you're to meet and what the quality expectations and tolerance levels and referring to various uh, standards, um, whether it's ASHRAE or CSA or ASTM. Um, there's a lot of different standards out there that they'll refer to that you have to make sure that you comply with. Uh, so that's that's sort of looking at that. And that, I say traditional because that's you know where it's based and that's not changing. So on lean, that's 
part of it, right? Like that, you have to do those um, things for sure. And, you know, compliance, durability and performance. So things shouldn't fall apart. There'll be warranty periods that you need to make sure that the building um, can hold up to workmanship. And, you know, well, obviously there's problems here with layout and this, this uh, prefabricated um, porch here uh, made out of uh, structural steel isn't um, situated properly on the support columns. So yeah, workmanship issues, things like that. Um, aesthetics, how does it look, you know, and what's the, what's the level of finish and detail and craftsmanship that's gone into it. Uh, should also include, and this is where we really kind of hone in under the lean side, but functionality, user satisfaction, uh, safety, and again, authorities having jurisdiction will, um, you know, have a lot of um, say in that because you have to meet all the regulatory requirements. There may be certain environmental uh, considerations with regards to meeting certification programs like LEED, Leadership in Energy Efficient Design, or other uh, basically certifications. Passive House uh, might be another one. Uh, Energy Star might be another one. Um, so basically, do we meet those requirements and have they been inspected and does what we did comply to it, right? So these are all sort of standard ways of looking at meeting quality expectations and terminology that you will hear is, well, first of all, basically there needs to be a quality system overall in the business. So, you know, the construction business should have quality system. This can be referred, looked at from two viewpoints. This could be looked at internally from a construction company point of view. This could be looked at from a facilities uh, management point of view. So this could be looked at several different ways, um, but we'll say from a GC's point of view, they have to have a quality system. And then basically for um, this particular project, they have to have a quality assurance plan that basically is outlining what it is going to be required on this particular project and basically um, developing a process uh, to ensure that um, you have a system in place and that it's going to be followed. And then the quality control is testing to make sure that this process and system is actually working because yeah, it's easy to say you've got a process and a system, but how is it working? So you gotta have some checks and balances built in there. And that's where the quality control comes in, right? Um, so it means that you're gonna have inspection points. You're gonna, I had on that early slide PDCA, like this, this is a, quality is a huge area and I'm not gonna co cover everything in, um, the 20 minutes or so of this video, but uh, basically you have methodologies to be able to plan something, to do something, to check it, right? And basically to adjust it, to improve it. Like a really good quality system is a system that is inclusive of, and this is where we get into lean, lean construction methods, which is inclusive of continuous improvement. So that's plan, do, check, act, sometimes referred to as plan, do, study, adjust, known as the Deming cycle, um, sometimes the Schuritz cycle. Uh, so basically, we wanna be able to continuously improve that process. So quality control gives us feedback so that we can then look at how do we improve this so this doesn't happen again. It's not like, we want this to just fix this. I want to figure out the root cause of what the problem is. And that's, that's another area of lean. So that's tying into the continuous improvement, having incorporating that feedback loop, plan, do, check, adjust, right? Uh, so that we can make sure that we're continuously improving. And this is where you want to have standard operating procedures. You want to basically, you onboard somebody, are they trained properly so that they um, do things the way that you want this company to be performing. It's very hard to improve something if you really don't know how you do it right now, right? And so this is a big differentiation between manufacturing and construction is we kind of show up on site, very fragmented, a lot of trades, and it's kind of hit and miss a lot of it. So as a contractor, if I'm a trade contractor, I want to set up my own 
standard operating procedures so we have certain ways that we do things so we can measure how are we doing you know we're we're checking we're doing quality control we're we're missing on this this mark why right and really sort of digging into that so you understand what's going on and once we have build those systems, we can be including training in those systems to make sure that people are properly trained. And we can check on the training as well to make sure that the training has the impact that we want, right? So if we train somebody and they're still not doing it, as Deming would say, don't blame the person, blame the system. And then you look at the training. How can we improve the training, right? There may be something, maybe we don't have a feedback loop in the training to check or, the, or enough reps in the chain in the training that the individual can uh, basically get it down. So uh, when we, as I was saying, lean construction, and again, I could spend hours on this, uh, basically when referencing lean construction, that quality takes on a holistic meaning. We're, we're optimizing for the whole project. Traditional, sometimes we're just optimizing for individual things, but sometimes how the individual things are working together they're not working so well together. So we're optimizing for taking a holistic project-based use, um, optimizing for the project, right? And as I said, it's that's why I started out with the Lexus and the basically Toyota. They're kind of the poster childs of lean manufacturing. Uh, I think they're undisputed in that. And so, really uh it's built on that and it's emphasized you know there's the six tenets of uh of uh weight i'm sorry six tenets of lean uh there's now a, like a pyramid um that's also being discussed like which really includes the philosophy as the base for it um and really you're looking at emphasizing efficiency uh looking at reducing waste adding value optimizing for the project reducing variation trying to have smaller batch sizes so you can have a continuous flow to the project and a big one in the middle is respect for people which requires engagement and collaboration and that's where it's a, i think the biggest opportunity in construction is this engagement and collaboration which we've been very hit and miss on Lean works at trying to make sure that it is the systems make it that it just happens to work that way. Lean construction and quality, as I was saying, includes customer value. What's who's the customer and adding value to the customer? Elimination of waste, right? I don't think we'll ever truly eliminate waste, but that's what you're thinking, right? It's a continuous, it's a never ending cycle. Continuous improvement never ends. So the goal is elimination of waste, continuous improvement, collaborative planning, collaborative planning. If we're not utilizing the expertise on the project, then that's a huge waste. And we may have to make sure that we have respect for people because otherwise people shut down and they disengage. Just in time delivery, well, we make sure that things aren't getting basically worn out, that there's problems and issues with it, stolen, etc., and we can improve the flow. Construction projects have too much stops and starts. I mean, I'm looking forward to September. I have a group of students coming in and I have them go out and find a construction project and monitor it for five, six weeks. And guaranteed about 25% of them are gonna come back to me and say, sir not much happened in the last five weeks like here's the pictures from week one here's the pictures from week five and you know what that happens too often we have too many stops and starts and big wait times. so that's why our projects are taking longer and longer to complete is we don't have a continuous flow so working on improving that will mean a lot with regards to improving schedules lowering costs and reducing variation, uh, which will make our clients much more satisfied and it will make our contractors more profitable. So standardization, well, that's what I was mentioning earlier. Visual management, make things visible, make things visible. Schedules you're doing collaboratively using last planner system. Errorproofing, trying to make it that you can't make mistakes, right? very very difficult to make mistakes and that's where Deming comes in 
where they'll blame, you blame the system instead of the person, right? So error proofing. Uh, a lot of Japanese terms. I'm going to have to do a video on all the different Japanese terms. Pokayo would be error proofing. Uh, lean tools and techniques. This is just a few. There's a lot of lean tools. Probably the, at the center would be the last planner system, which is the whole system which allows us to collaborate, iterate, and get the best value out of our projects and optimize for the projects instead of the individuals. Value stream mapping is looking at some, how we do something understanding it and then looking for where there are um, wasteful elements basically where you end up wasting a lot of time there may be steps that you don't need or steps that could be more fluid uh, so value stream mapping is looking how things are currently done and then trying to figure out how they could be done in the future so current based future based five uh, s's is a great way of talking about how do we organize, better organize our projects and organize our sites. This is just an example here, not very 5Sing, you know, where you got all these uh, mortar bags all over the place, masonry cement. Uh, if I'm a masonry uh, contractor, bricklayer company, I would make sure that, and you know, I used to do a lot of this kind of thing. My background was masonry at one point, uh, carpentry and masonry. I would have it set up that I've got basically you break the bag over the mortar mixer and you've got something you put the bag straight in. Not that you throw it on the ground. This is up in uh, Collingwood in Ontario, Canada, and there's a huge lake here uh, and part of Lake Huron, Georgian Bay, and the wind blows off of there like crazy. And these bags, they were all over the streets like five, six blocks away. And you know, you just don't do that, right? But they do. But 5Sing would be set up a system so it makes it easy for you not to do that. The whole thing is about making things easy, not about making them hard. And so quality at its core is about doing things once, doing them right, having sat and whether you're talking standard or whether you're talking about lean, doing it once, having it done right but adding value to the client, making sure that what you've designed suits the client. It goes much, much bigger and broader when we get into a lot of the lean discussion aspects of it. Designing and uh, designing for production and designing for uh, quality and designing for cost early stages with inputs from the key trades who know things more than just an architectural firm would necessarily know. And so that's where we can really sort of extract um, value on our projects. So we've got a long way to go on this, but I thought this was a good start for it. I'm Tom Stevenson. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, click like and click subscribe. If you've got a question or comment, leave it in the comments and we will see you next time. Bye for now.